Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, today, we're very fortunate to have a talk by Ayatollah Sayyid Fadl Milani, who will be speaking to us about uh, the commemoration of the death anniversary of the Prophet Sallallahu and Imam Hassan Alayhi Salam. But before that, we will start our program with a recitation of Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلى الله قصد السبيل ومنها جائر ولو شاء لهداكم أجمعين هو الذي أنزل من السماء ماء لكم منه شراب ومنه شجر فيه تسيمون ينبت لكم به الزرع والزرع زيتون والنخيل والأعناب ومن كل الثمرات إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يتفكرون وسخر لكم الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره مسخرات بأمره إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعقلون وما ذرى لكم في الأرض مختلفا ألوانه إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يذكرون وهو الذي سخر البحر لتأكل كُلُوا مِنْهُ لَحْمًا طَرِيًّا وَتَسْتَخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً وَتَسْتَخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُ تَلْبِسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَنْ تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ وَأَنْهَارًا وَسُبُلًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ وَعَلَامَاتِ وَبِالنَّجْمِ هُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ صدق الله العلي العظيم. Thank you very much for that beautiful recitation. Uh, we are now very fortunate to, and honored to have Atla Sayyid Fadl Milani speak to us on the uh, death anniversary of the Prophet Sallallahu and Imam Hassan Alayhi Salaam. Uh, Sayyid Fadl Milani, as many of you will be aware, has come to Mecca on a number of occasions. And he was born in Karbala, Iraq, uh, and he read uh, religious studies at the Hoza of Najaf from 1962 to 1970 under the late uh, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Abul Qasim al khoi and from uh, 1968 to 1970 under the late Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhsan al-Hakim. In 1974, he became acknowledged as a mujtahid in Mash Mashhad, and his work on Ijtihad, uh, lectures on Imamiyah uh, jurisprudence pub published in six volumes, is currently used in the houses of Mashhad al-Qum. Uh, he, in 1994, he was awarded a PhD in Islamic philosophy in Oxford University, and he has a long history of um, uh, many different lectures in, uh, across the country. Uh, let's welcome him. Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين 
Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم On the 28th of Safar All followers of Ahl al-Bayt commemorate the demise of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the seal of messengers. And on one narration, the martyrdom of his grandson, Imam al-Hassan al-Mushtaba. By the way, let me say in the introduction that there are two narrations about the date for the martyrdom of Imam Hassan. Most of Muslims and Shias in Arab countries, they commemorate this occasion on 7th of Safar. But in uh, many other countries, uh, including the subcontinent, it is uh, the day before uh, the day uh, before the first day of Rabi' al-Awwal, which means the day after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. Now, so as you heard that we are going to talk about both, uh, most of our time will be devoted to the uh, memory and the demise of the, and the characteristics, the qualities of the uh, seal of the messengers, the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and the rest of the time we'll have opportunity to talk about Imam Hassan and some uh, issues, some uh, lessons to be learned from him. The ayah which I started is that I quote one ayah for the beginning of the message, another ayah which again came in the early days of Islam. These are as to describe the qualities of the Prophet ﷺ. Then we see that throughout the life of the Prophet from him being appointed as a messenger until his death, which took some 23 years, uh, how people dealt and what was the attitude of people towards this messenger? And in the third ayah, I try to quote one ayah, the, uh, the one reference to the uh, what, uh, what 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 is going to happen after the death and departing this messenger from this temporary life to the eternity. So the first one was, which I started with, was in Surah number 9, Ayah 128. And I'm going to translate that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this Ayah, which is one Ayah before the end of Surah Tawbah, a messenger from among you has come to you. Then Allah mentions three qualities for this messenger. First, any distress that befalls you grieves him. And this is really the best attribution and quality that we find it in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he is not only a leader, he is not only dealing with them with some sort of superiority, no. Every single member of the community, if faces any difficulty, atrocity, problem, stress, so the Prophet وسلم, will be grieved. And this is what the beginning of the message. And that shows that the Prophet وسلم, was a human being and feeling all humane characteristics before being appointed as a messenger. So he was before Islam even, at the, I mean, pre-Islamic uh, era, 
the Jahiliya, he was known by Meccans to be a Sadiq al Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy, to the extent that people of Mecca wage every type of war, accused him, and I mean, spread allegations about him, but he did not reflect at all. And when he was ordered to migrate from Mecca to Medina, he left all the property left with him uh, in trust with Imam Ali السلام, and ordered him to stay there after the migration in order to give all belongings to their all or the, the, the real owners, then joining the Prophet to Medina. So uh, it is rare to find that someone who was attacked, who was mistreated, and now there are property of people in his hand. He observed the maximum of honesty. He proved to be observing all these moral values these ethical principles. So, as-sadiq al-amin, the trustworthy, the, the, the truthful. Now, the first quality in this ayah, which is ayah number 128 in surah number nine, that any distress that befalls you grieves him. This is the first. The second, he is extremely concerned for your welfare. So, whilst it was uh, sharing the difficulties, the problems, the misfortune with others, now let's go for the positive side of the story, that he was concerned with the welfare of people. And in all or every opportunity that he had to talk to, the companions or any other people, he treated them uh, with maximum fairness. And at the same time, I mean, was insisting to teach them how to progress, how to look at things with some sort of uh, uh, illumination and light and leave the darkness, leave all the negative whatever attitudes. And at the same time, he made one statement which is a lesson for all, especially for Muslims. He said that when two days of your life are equal, which means that you did not make any progress, you are loser. So calling for progress and betterment, advancement, these are so important principles in the policy and the way that the prophet was treating, I mean, others. The third quality, which is very, very important here in this ayah, he is most affectionate and merciful to the believers. So, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَلِتُمْ حَرِيزٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ and to your knowledge and to your surprise, brothers and sisters, these two qualities, Rauf and Rahim, affectionate and merciful, are amongst and part of the most beautiful names of Allah, most divine attributes which are mentioned in the Quran. In at least nine, uh, nine occasions, nine ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself with these qualities, that he is, he almighty, is affectionate and he is merciful, Rauf rahim Now we see that he grants these two qualities and admits that Prophet Muhammad is having those. So it is not only connecting them by revelation to the divine, and asking them to go for acts of worship. No, they have to, first of all, he was 
dealing with them in this way and they have to make progress and their welfare was so important in the mind of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is one ayah in the beginning. A few uh, stages later, maybe two years later, we read in Surah number five, uh, sorry, Surah number seven, ayah 157, Surah Al-Araf, ayah 157, the Prophet is mentioned with 10 qualities. And all these 10 qualities in one ayah. He is the messenger, the prophet, the unlettered one. He is mentioned in the Torah and Injil. He is, he commands the good, forbids the evil, endorses the wholesome as lawful, decrees what is found to be unlawful. The ninth relieves all the burdens and shackles. Then the light was sent down with him. I'm not going to recite the whole ayah for you in order to deal with other subjects. And first, let's make a difference and see what's the difference between the messenger and the prophet. The prophets only bring news from God and deliver it to people. But the messenger has the law, the sharia, the answer to every single issue and sing, I mean, subject matter, anything that people face and confront and whatever is needed for this life or hereafter, individuals or the whole society, political or educational and all other aspects. So that is the difference between the messenger and the prophet. So every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. The third quality, brothers and sisters, is so important that in Arabic it is said, and the Quran is an nabiyul ummi. Al-ladina yattabi'oon al-rasool al-nabiyyal ummi. Unfortunately, some people are mistaken in translating this al-ummi. It is a technical term. It is the unlettered one and not the illiterate. There's a big difference between them. First of all, when Jibreel, for the first archangel Jibreel, came in the cave of Hira to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there, he said, Iqra, read, Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, in the name of your Lord who created. And after two, three ayahs, he said that, Allam uh, al-insana ma la bimi'alam. So see a message, a divine message comes and straight talking about read, then who taught by pen. So it was the opening for some in new era where educating and teaching and elevating people in every aspect was so important. And you may ask that when Jibreel said, Iqra, read, the reporters, the people who write the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of them mistakenly says that the Prophet said, I can't read. But the Arabic word wasn't that. He said that I am not used to read. And why he was not used to read, the answer we find it in Surah number 29, Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 48. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that had you been known amongst the people of Mecca, being able to read, to have access to books, they would accuse you that you quoted whatever you are saying from the previous scripture. And these scriptures were known to him, so he quoted from them. So in order to nullify and refute that accusation and claim, I mean, Allah SWT made him unlettered. Of course, the other qualities. Now, this is the beginning of the person for whom we are gathering tonight, 
to commemorate his departure from this temporary life to the eternity. And later on, we see that in one ayah, three qualities, in another ayah, 10 qualities are there. Let's move to other side of our discussion. How people treated the Prophet They were uncivilized. They were not having any etiquette at all. Why? Because the great messenger of Allah SWT, I mean, it is if someone knows the discipline, comes to knock at the door, ask permission to enter or see the Prophet. But they would come from behind the private chambers and loudly calling, Oh Muhammad, Oh Muhammad. So, and they were not feeling any respect and not treating the Prophet وسلم, with any respect. So, this disrespectful behavior wasn't once, it was something which all were known by that. But did the Prophet وسلم, blame them or argue with them or criticize them? No, never. But Allah SWT tells us in Surah Al Hujurat. Uh, from ayah 3 to ayah 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Those who lower these, their voices in the presence of Allah's Messenger are those whose hearts are full of piety and understanding because those who call you from outside the private chambers lack understanding if they keep patient until you come out and is here addressing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it would certainly better for them. And the ayah which I chose to mention it tonight for you regarding the end of his life. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the Prophet that you are going to leave and depart and no one before you lived forever in this world and you are not exception. This is an ayah in the Quran. Say it, Father, I think you're on mute still. I'm mute, yeah. Is it now? It's fine now, thank you. you. Okay, all right. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so the uh, prophet said that Jibreel used to revise the whole Quran with me once a year. But after coming back from well, uh, I mean, the Hajjat uh, al-Wida, welfare pilgrimage, uh, the Prophet wasallam said that Jibreel revised the Quran this year twice. And I take this as a sign that I am going uh, to depart and no longer remain with you. So, Ayah 144 in Surat al-Imran, Surah number three, Say that Muhammad is only a messenger. Other messengers have already passed away before him. Will you turn back on your heels if he dies or is slain? He who does so will know, will do no harm to Allah. And that was 
one of the sad news that even talking about people who are waiting, who were waiting for the prophet to go away and they feel free and they back to whatever anarchy and disorder they had. So they thought that they are restricted. They are uh, somehow not having their uh, freedom in doing whatever their uh, emotions and their whims were uh, requesting. All right. So he is going to die and we get rid of him. This was in the mind of many. Though Allah SWT said that if these people, whether it happens that the Prophet dies or is going to be murdered, slain, okay, in qalabtum ala aqabikum, you will turn back on your heels. And that was one of the most dreadful things that people experienced after the demise of the Prophet وسلم, to the extent that like last night or today, 28th of Safar, the Prophet said to those who are near him, bring me a pen and paper that I will write you my last will. That if you stick to both that I'm leaving behind two precious things. I am leaving behind two precious things. As long as you stick to both of them, you will never go astray. And to your surprise, one of the uh, people who are attending there, so-called I mean, companions said that the old man is in delirium, which means that the uh, the the uh, temperature and the uh, talking about nonsense and not concentrating on what he is saying. Okay, the book of Allah is sufficient for us, and here was some sort of beginning of the dispute, the rift between the Muslims, why they did not allow the Prophet in his last day or last hours to leave a golden will, the instruction, the advice that will write down and explain to them the path toward happiness and progress. Anyway, so, this is briefly something from the history of the Prophet وسلم, the qualities he had according to the Quran, then the way that people would mistreat him or treat him badly uh, with disrespect uh, and uh, the behavior which is not acceptable, then towards the end. But when we look at the content of the message, the principles of all prosperity and what is helping people to enhance spiritually, economically, health-wise, and more importantly, how to be good human, how to be people who think of others and put the needs of others prior to their own needs, to move from individualism into socialism and to always stick to morality and most importantly, to pardon others when they do something wrong to you. So this is the time for us to remember the holy messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all these values and know that the imams from his progeny, from his household, the one who was appointed by him in the authentic narration, which is narrated by more than 70 
five reliable narrators that he said that I am the city of the knowledge and Ali is the gate to that city. So the heritage, the culture, the values, Sorry, I think you're still on mute. I think you, you you lost your connection. I think you're back, but if you could unmute yourself, that would be great. I'll just ask. Yes. yes. Now, I think it's okay, yes? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, let's move to second part of our discussion, and that is about Imam Al-Hassan Al-Mushtaba, alayhi salam, the first grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know that all sons, all the Prophet's sons, Al-Qasim, Abdullah, and Ibrahim died in a very early, early days. And this, according to Arab culture, that the lineage and the continuation of someone's existence comes only through the sons. So, the grandsons coming via a daughter, they were not recognized as belonging to the Prophet or connecting to him. And that's why many of people in Mecca, before moving to Medina, they called the Prophet as Aptar. And Aptar means the one who does not have offspring. No children. Because Neither Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, or the other sisters, I mean, they did not recognize them, recognize them as the continuation. So they said the chain will be disconnected and full stop. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala noticed that this is going to become something, I mean, in public as a title to the Prophet, he revealed. Surah Al-Kawthar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'atainak al-Kawthar. We granted you the abundance, abundance in everything, in offspring, in children, in knowledge, in every good thing. Inna inna a'atainak al-Kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Those who hate you and dispute with you, these are aptar, which means that they are not going to have the continuation in their whatever lineage and their children. So, when Al Hassan Al Mushtaba, the first fruit from the marriage between Imam Ali and Fatima, Sayyid to Nisa al Alameen, was born, the Prophet Sallallahu was delighted, and after him was his brother Hussein, to the extent that in many occasions, the Prophet Sallallahu said, and all companions witnessed that, he said that al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl Jannah, Hassan and Hussein are masters of the youth, in paradise. But when we come to the narration of the death of Imam Hassan السلام, the day after the death of the Prophet, which means like tomorrow, which is 29th of Safar, I mean, let me quote for you first the advice that Imam Ali السلام, gave to Imam Hassan 
for itself, it can be explained in one complete book of 400 pages. But I'm quoting only two paragraphs from the advice that Imam Ali gave to his son when he was very young. He first said, oh, he first said, oh, my son, be balanced in your dealing with others. You should seek for them what you yourself want and consider unpalatable for them all you yourself consider to be unpalatable. Do not be, do not be oppressive as a reflection of your own wish not to be oppressed and be good to them as a reflection of your own desire for good. Do not talk about what you don't know, even if you have a vague knowledge of the subject. Indeed, brothers and sisters, these are advices that Imam Ali al Islam wants to tell us. It is, we are meant to receive this via his son, al Hassan. And in another paragraph, he, the Imam says to Imam Hassan, do not be deceived by people's rush towards worldly attractions, for like barking dogs, they loathe each other, the stronger eat the weaker, and the larger trample the smaller. As I said, that is his only one small quote from the advice of Imam Ali to Imam Hassan, and Imam Hassan act upon, acted and complied with all those advices, which is very well known in Najil Balagha, yeah, in his, uh, through, throughout his life. But what is linked to this conversation about the death of Imam Al-Hassan Al-Mushtaba alayhi salam is that when he was on the deathbed and he was poisoned and he was suffering, as you know, the worst types and worst, I mean, uh, problems of someone who is departing uh, as a result of this uh, whole organs affected by the poison. A companion called Junada came to him and asked for advice. So those who were sitting next to the Imam thought that, oh, how dare this person? He says that the Imam is in difficulty. He is weak and now is uh, trying to bother the Imam. But he said, no, 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 let him ask. And it is his right to seek knowledge or advice, even in these circumstances, these difficulties that I am in. So again, there are long, I mean, uh, uh, phrases about that, but I chose only two out of them. The first one, the Imam says that, be prepared for the journey, but before you depart, of course, the journey towards the eternity. Because according to a sermon of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahd al-Balagha, that, O oh people, you are meant to move in this journey and you are not going to stay forever. So be prepared for the journey and take this stuff with you for that. Any passenger, when decides to go, when plans to go for a holiday or any, anything, all right, traveling, prefers the visa, the passport, the money, the uh, even the medicine, medication needs in, in this journey, all right? Because to be prepared to take what you need during your uh, journey, yeah? So the Imam tells Junaid that be prepared for the journey, but before you depart, make ready that which you need to take with you. For you may be certain that while you are in pursuit 
of the pleasure of dunya, death is in pursuit of you. And later on, he says that, stay active in your worldly affairs as if you are to live forever, but remain continuously aware of the hereafter as if your demise will be tomorrow. This balance between the requirements of the worldly affairs, the needs of this life to be concerned, you know, and you don't uh, need to be reminded that every and each of us, we think about financial problems, about the education of our children, about all of, about the bills and all other whatever issues related to what? Our health, our money, our status, our education, our uh, family, all right? And some other hobbies. So, but the Imam says that make balance between these two. That if you want to deal with the worldly affairs, think as if you are going to live forever. For example, don't say it is too late. Some people, when you ask them to start reading, educating, changing their whatever habits or uh, doing something, uh, say, oh no, it is too late. I'm, I'm not going to survive more, so why should, why should I bother? No, no, the Imam says, Junada. You have to deal with all these needs as if you are going to live forever. But as for what is needed for the hereafter, you have always to think that this is the last day and you may die tomorrow. So you will prepare it. Otherwise, for example, when Omar ibn Sa'd killed Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and he was promised to become the governor of Ray Tehran today. Yeah. So some people blamed him and said, Look, you killed an innocent person with all principles, all moralities, the grandson of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said that he is from me and I am from him, Husaynun Minni, Walam Hussein. Yeah. Why? How dared you to do so? How made you? go for this. Did you? I'm, I'm sure that you heard that. He said, look, uh, I'm promised the governor, uh, gover uh, governance or government of Ray, Daran. So if I get it, I will enjoy this life. And two years before my death, two years before my death, I repent to Allah SWT and Allah will accept my repentance. This is wrong. Why? because it is impossible for someone to know that when he's going to die. So the Imam said to Junada, be prepared and think that you are going to die tomorrow. So that is the balance that you can do. And as you know, that the Imam was shrouded, was uh, in all the uh, the Salat al janaz and everything was done and he was carried to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be buried there but some people objected that in, in the end he was taken to Baqiya when all people who go for Hajj or Umrah they go and pay their homage and respect to Imam Hassan there. So brothers and sisters this is a brief report about the life, about the teachings, and about the principles of religion, principles of ethics, and the manners to be adopted in life. And we learn from them and promise that we keep in line with the teachings of the Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and our Imams, and is a particular night Imam Yam Hassan Al Mushtaba Ali Salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Thank you very much for your talk and for insights that you've drawn. Um, we do have a couple of time, um, minutes for questions, if that's okay. Uh, there have been a couple yep. of questions come through. Yes, why not? Um, I'm just going to read them out because um, they've chosen to share them with me rather than um, send them. So the first question is, um, what is your analysis on the cause of death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did he die of a natural death at the age of 63 or was he martyred? Uh, in reality, uh, we have one narration that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was heading to Khaybar to fight the Jews there who challenged the Prophet many, many times, one uh, woman who offered uh, some food, uh, it was leg of lamb, which was poisoned and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ate from that and that had a gradual and not immediate uh, uh, impact on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But other than that, uh, there is really little solid, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, right to talk about this or evidence to say that he was martyr or something like that. That is my understanding, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Um, second question here is, why is it so important whether the Prophet, whether the prophet was unlettered or illiterate? Oh, yes. Because we know that the Prophet and later on the Imam must be the most perfect in comparison to members of his community. And this is part of the uh, uh, Islamic theology or the Imami theology. So in Aqaid and Ilm al-Kalam of Shia, as I spoke in details about that in my book, Islamic Theology, that the Prophet وسلم, will be uh, the uh, role model and the most perfect member of the community. In Sufi practice, they call him Al-Insan Al-Kamil, the perfect man. And later on, they call the Shaykh uh, of, of Tariqa, uh, they call him Al-Insan Al-Kamil, the perfect man. And people strive to go closer to him and to that grade when they go uh, closer to the whatever teacher or Murshid or Shaykh, they uh, get higher ranks there. So uh, let's forget about this, whatever I mean, Sufi say, but what I'm trying to say that the prophet uh, to be, and if he was, uh, uh, I mean, illiterate, which it is a type of what? Ignorance. Because now someone who cannot read or cannot, I mean, write, I mean, people, look down at him. So this is the theology, this is the doctrine, as I said, or justification that Shia doctrine uh, mentions about the difference between unlettered, which means that he was full of knowledge, well acquainted with everything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but practically practicing writing and uh, uh, reading would leave the window for accusation to say that, oh, he is bringing this from the previous uh, scriptures, whether divine or not. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one more question has come on from the YouTube channel directly um, on the chat. Uh, my question, when it, when it gets to the... I'm sorry. What is the importance of learning about the martyrdom of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Imam Hassan al Indeed, I mean, one of the elements to keep every community alive and help them to survive is to connect the present with the past. And that is something... Now, if you go to many streets in London, you see yellow, uh, sorry, blue plaques are on some buildings to say that certain uh, musician, certain painter, certain uh, philosopher lived in this place for 40 years, 30 years, or from this date to that date. 
uh, this doesn't mean anything, but that you connect. And when you go to the museum, what is just, I mean, see some uh, sculptures and something like that. No, I mean, it connects you to and the nation, the community that connects itself. Connect is present to the past, is surviving. It is uh, something which is admirable and it is, I mean, uh, acceptable by all. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think we, we will end there. We will end there um, just uh, because we've had three questions and inshallah we'll go to the next part of the program. Thank you so much, Sayyid Fadl, uh, for, for honoring us with your presence and, um, and, and for us to have the opportunity to, to learn from you. Um, and inshallah we will see you again soon in, 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 in a future talk. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we'll now move to the next part of our program, uh, if that's okay. Um, and we'll have uh, the, the Marcia, uh, um, which will be coming out. So um, let's start that. In Mecca. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Kuch hi bachwala nazira. Bete na bhai nana. Kuch hi bachwala nazira. Bete na bhai कुछ जैसे कई बचीजें तुरबत रुला रही थी मासूम बेवतन की पेवस्त कैदियों के जख्मों में थी रसन भी थी कैद से ज़िआदा मुश्किल रिहाई नाना जैसे गई थी जनाब वैसे न आई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई ना वो हम किसी नबी के बेटों ने भी न देखे हर मोर हर कदम पे बदरो ओहद के बदले जो तेरी बेटियों ने कीमत चुकाई ना जैसे गई थी जनाब वैसे न आई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा 
बेटे न भाई माना कतले हुसैन जैसे जैनब पे वो घरी थी जालिम के सामने जब दरबार में खरी थी याद आए मुझको इस दम अठारह भाई नाना जैसे गई थी जैना वैसे न आई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई नुमस मिल रहा था चेहरे बदल गए थे शोले किसी ने फेंके पत्थर किसी ने मारे मुजरिम था तेरा कुंबा मुन्न सिर्फ खुदाई नाना जैसे गई थी जैना वैसे न आई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई नाना है नक्ष जहलो दिल पर आशूर का वो मंजर गुरबत की शाम में ना बोलूंगी जिंदगी भर वो बेकफन जनाजा और बेरी दाई नाना जैसे गई थी जैना वैसे न आई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई नाना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई उम्मत ने यूं सताया शबीर की बहन को बेगोर छोर आई हर लाश बेकफन को बस दिल में हसरतों की तुरबत बनाई ना जैसे गई थी जैना वैसे न आई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई घश कर गई ये कह कर मोहसिन अली की बेटी तेरा कलम पढ़ने वाले कहते थे हम को बागी हर संत से यही एक आवाज आई जैसे गई थी जैना वैसे न आई ना कुछ भी बचा न मेरा
तेन भाई न कुछ भी बचा न मेरा बेटे न भाई न बेटे न भाई न محمد وال محمد اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ محمد و آل محمد بر محمد و آل محمد صلوات اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ محمد Thank you very much for that beautiful recitation. Um, uh, we are going to uh, end the program now. Thank you very much for that beautiful recitation. Um, I'm uh, sorry, we, we are going to end that, uh, the, the, the program right now. Um, we will end with uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, you can find all of the information on our website on sikkim.org.uk and uh, our next talk next week are, is by Zahra al Um She's one of the top um, junior barristers in the country. Um, she's going to be talking about the, some of the legal implications of COVID-19. Uh, the week after, we have uh, Shalina Jan Muhammad, who will be talking about being an author. And uh, one of the things that she'll be talking about is her latest book, The Extraordinary Life of Serena Williams. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about our programs, please go to sikkim.org.uk. Thank you very much for listening today and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.